welcome back guys. In today's episode, we're going to be getting to the bottom of our snagging list from our first drive episode the other day. And we're also going to be seeing if we can get to the bottom of why the car decided to pretty much break down on the way home. Oh, come on. Let's go and take a look. Now then, the first thing on our list is the gear change. The gear change on the Mark 1 MR2 is meant to be an absolute dream. And as we found out in last week's episode, this one really isn't. Now I'm hoping it's just down to lubrication. So the first thing I did was I hopped underneath the car and had a little look at where the rods come from the gear lever through to the gearbox. And I rubbed it all down give it a good old clean through and then sprayed some silicon spray grease onto all of the moving parts and then we hopped back inside the car moved it all around manipulated it selected all the gears many many times and now everything seems pretty good so that'll be tested on our up and coming test drive the next thing was the fact that the car pretty much broke down on us now there was quite a few comments, thanks very much for your heads up guys in the comments section. And a lot of people said fuel filter and I kind of agree. Now, if you have a little look at the new fuel filter, you will see that it has an arrow on it. And that is the direction of flow. Now if you take a look under the bonnet in the engine bay, you will see the one on the car is fitted upside down. Now, hands up guys. I fitted it going back in the summer six months before I got the car when we were diagnosing the non-running issue with the previous owner and I fitted it in a rush but I did copy what was already on there. Now the fact that that one was fitted upside down the car was still running up until the point that it stopped running I don't think it is the issue but to eliminate it removed it from the job took it out the carrier put the new one in the carrier bolted it back onto the firewall, connected up the two hoses, checked for leaks and started the car back up. So now we can head out onto the road and do a quick test drive to see how that new fuel filter and lubricated gear change performs on the road. One last thing before we head out on our first test drive, the clunk on our front suspension driver's side at the front, diagnosed as the nylock nut in the middle of the strut was an eighth of a turn loose. And all that was causing was over a bump was a little bit of metal on metal clunking noise. Tightened it up. Let's give it a try. Now then for the interest of timing, it is the 25th of March, which means in the UK it is day two of our COVID-19 coronavirus lockdown. Now you're only allowed out in your car if you are going out to get essential food. So, We've had to delay our test drive until we got hungry. So we've got our reusable bags and we're off to the shop to get some food because unfortunately with the way of the world, it is the only way that we can get any miles on Project MR2. So let's hit the road and let's go do some, some miles to the shop. I wish it could be longer guys, but unfortunately it can't. That is a lot better already, a hell of a lot better. That clunky, clunky nastiness is gone. But our little hiccup at very low light partial revs, very low load is still there. But we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Now also for the interest of the test drive, We've managed to get the car fully up to temperature in the garage because we want to limit the amount of time that we're on the road because we only want to be doing essential driving and we don't want to waste that essential driving time warming the car up. All thanks to me. All thanks to Anna. What very, you very do true. Without me, hey? First feels good, second is a lot more positive, third, again, nice. And also the fact that the car is now warming up to temperature means we can squeeze on a little bit. Because I don't think we went much past about three, 
three and a half thousand RPM on our drive to the MOT station. is about Woo -hoo! I like that that was only nearly 6,000 rpm but it was a very fun 6,000 rpm it all kind of fizzes and bubbles and it all comes alive at that sort of that sort of revs it's very exciting very exciting it's like he's doing that <laughs> it's like winning Find it out once more before we uh, get to the shops. Ooh, that is good fun. That is good fun. Right then, guys, um, we're off to the shops. We're going to get some uh, some garage essentials for the up and coming time that I'm going to be stuck in the garage. So um, as long as we don't break down. See you back at the garage. Now then, still things to work on. The next thing we're gonna do is remove the throttle body to check the calibration of the TPS, throttle position sensor. Quite a simple thing to remove. Four bolts, a vacuum line, the air hose coming onto the throttle body, the connector to the TPS, and the throttle linkage itself, which just snaps off the job. We can then take it over to the bench and we can do some testing. Now, before we go over to the bench, guys, it can be tested on the car itself, but it is a hundred times easier to do off the job. Right, that's the throttle body off the job. Now, these two lines used to go to the AAV, automatic air valve, which is why my car won't start without a little bit of pedal. And also that little bit of glue inside the throttle body is also to do with this setup. Now then, that came off nice and easily. But everything in life tells a story. This is the TPS. It's got a screw missing at the bottom, which means it's got the ability to go out of calibration if it is ever calibrated right. And there's a little bit of yellow paint on there. Second hand one from the breakers, maybe. Now then, gents, first things first, you will need a 13, a 19, and a 23 thou feeler gauge. And you'll need a multimeter, which we'll set to ohms. Now then, the inside of the connections are buried all the way down here. And they're very difficult to get to. So I've made up some little test leads. Tiny little connector on the end that I can reach in and put onto there. So then, let's go through the series of tests. And initially, we are just going to set up the TPS. Just initial setting. Then we'll go through the testing procedure afterwards. First things first... Loosen your two screws, which obviously I've removed to make new screws for my TPS because one was missing. Everything tells a story. Now the first thing we're going to do is get our 19 thou feeler gauge and pop it underneath the throttle stop like that. Just check that it's not fouling anything either. So we've got a 19 thou prop open of the throttle body itself. We now need to connect our test leads to the IDL and E2 connections on our throttle body. But as you look at it, idle and E2 are the top two connections. We are gradually gonna turn the TPS clockwise until it goes open circuit. So if we go quickly, wait, 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 wait. Open circuit, just there. So there's a little point just in between there and there that it goes open circuit. Now then we're just going to nip our screws up a little bit so that we've got a little bit more control over what we're doing. Just keep going ever so slowly until you get to that little sweet spot. Boom. That's just on the cusp there, just there. So what we're going to do is we're going to nip them up like that and like that. So now we have just gone open circuit at 19 thou feeler gauge on the throttle body. 
The next thing we can do is remove our 19 thou feeler gauge and pop in a 13. And that should give us continuity. The final thing to do is remove the 13 and pop in a 23, which should give us open circuit, which we've got. The next thing we can do is move on to the general testing of the resistance readings on the TPS. The first thing we need to do is move our pins down to the middle two pins, which is VTA and E2. And with nothing in the throttle body itself, you're looking for 0.2 to 0.8 kilo ohms, 843 ohms. Top end of our tolerance, that's all okay. The final reading is done between VTA and E2, and that is with the throttle body fully open and we're looking for 3.3 to 10 kilo ohms. Oh dear. So that tells me that this TPS is faulty. Right then guys, mini update. The man of the hour, Neil Jones, despite the way the world has sent us out another TPS in the post. It's a hell of a lot different to the one we had on the car and when I sent him the picture of the old one he said, I've not seen one of those before. So the plot thickens. I then tested the new TPS according to the Haynes manual and it didn't check out. And I'm scratching my head, I'm thinking, what's going on? Why is this not working? Bring it in, have a look. I will first reference the table. VTA and E2, idle and E2. Have a little look at this picture here. Idle is at the top, E2 is the first one in. So of course when I test my VTA in E2 from my 3.3 to 10 kilo ohms, naturally you check the two middle terminals. And if you do that, you get open circuit at throttle fully open, which leads you to think your TPS is faulty. Have a little look down at another picture on the same page. E2 is now the outside one. Idle or IDL is the inside one. Idle outside, idle first one in. E2 outside. E2, second one in. So now, I've set the new TPS up and all of these check out perfectly. And then if you follow this picture for these readings, as per second picture, VTA, which is the third one in, which is the same on, well, there's only one picture, third one in, which is this one, and the new E2, which is the top one, Throttle fully open, we're looking for 3.3 to 10 kilo ohms. Well, bugger me, we've got 4.73, which is in the tolerance. So now this checks out. Right then guys, time to head out on the road and test our new calibrated TPS and also a few little bits and bobs that I've done over the last couple of days. Now in the interest of this whole UK lockdown thing, it is Sunday the 29th of March and we're going out shopping for food because we've run out of food again. Trust me, if you saw our breakfast today, we've definitely, definitely run out of food. So let's get the car out of the garage and we'll go out on the road and hopefully do our last little bit of test driving of this episode. And if it all goes well, we'll, we'll push those revs on a little bit and see if we can get it singing. This is so much better. <clears throat> It's so good. I always felt from pulling away at low speeds, I always had to use a little bit of revs. It always felt like it kind of bogged down a little bit. But now it feels, it just feels more sure footed at, at idle. It feels brilliant. It drives like, just like a normal car. Time to test that TPS at some higher revs. Let's push it on a little bit, shall we? Well, there we have it we're back and everything works really really nicely i would say that 
new TPS, recalibration, and a fuel filter, and the car drives beautifully. Like I was saying earlier, there's kind of there was almost like a bit of a hesitation at like idle when you're pulling away. I always felt I had to kind of like jab the clutch back in and a little bit of revs, and now that's all that hesitation is gone. And well, as you saw, she sings at high revs as well, so I'm more than happy. Thank you very much for all of your comments, guys. All of your fuel filter comments, TPS comments. You were on the money. You definitely were. Um, and also, like I say, because I got bored, I ended up doing loads of stuff to the car. Extra stuff in this video, which I will show you in the next episode. Um, thanks again, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for kind of sharing this, this journey um, in more ways than one. I'm really enjoying this car. It drives like a dream now. I'm more than happy. It's only going to get better. It's only going to improve. Um, thanks again. See you soon. Take care.